Okay, so what we have here is the Balfang. It is the UV9R Pro, and uh, it's one of the newer Balfangs. There's been a whole lot of these things released over the years, various different versions, numbers, firmwares. Some of them are made by Balfang. Some of them are made by copyright, counterfeit, and cloners. Uh, I do believe this is a legitimate Balfang, but I don't think I have a 100% certain way to tell. Uh, I bought this because my buddy Stan, he said he saw a video on the internet that said that this was the best Balfang, and he wanted me to test one out for him. So it's sitting here. I got it off of Amazon for about $28.99 shipped. All right, let's see what this thing comes with. Well, look at this portable two-way radio user's manual, waterproof radio. We're not going to read that. Uh, here is the radio itself, and it came in that nice protective plastic. Here we go. On the back of it, there's some information, including an FCC ID. Maybe we'll take a look at that. Let's see. We got a battery. We have a USB-C charging cable, and uh, look at this. On the back of the battery, it's got a USB-C charging port. So that would mean that this radio is USB-C chargeable. We got a bent antenna. We have a wall wart AC adapter with a barrel jack on it. See that? And I guess that plugs into this thing. This is our charging cradle. It has these screw mounts on there. I guess you could mount this thing to the wall if you wanted. And then here's where your barrel connector goes in. I never use these things. And we have a belt clip. Let's see what this was. This looks like a little piece of sticker or a piece of plastic. Maybe you put your call sign in there and then stick it here to the bottom of the radio. I don't know. All right, that's it. If you're looking for a fast and easy way to get your amateur radio license, look no further than Ham Radio Prep. I went through the content on Ham Radio Prep, and I was surprised at how easy it was to understand, learn, and retain the information. They've done a fantastic job presenting it in an easy-to-consume format. Signing up or enrolling is easy. Just click the Sign Up button, pick the product that you're interested in, for example, the technician class. When you sign up for a class in Ham Radio Prep, Use the coupon code SMOKEN8, there's no G in that, so don't make that mistake, and you'll be eligible for 20% off. Folks who use Ham Radio Prep have a 99% success rate. Ham Radio Prep offers a money-back guarantee if you don't pass your test on the first try, and over 60,000 people have gotten their license by using Ham Radio Prep. If you're the kind of person that prefers self-paced video learning over reading books and materials, then Ham Radio Prep might be for you. Check them out, and don't forget to use coupon code SMOKEN8 for 20% off. Hey, we're zoomed in a little bit, and uh, this antenna does have a little bit of a memory effect on it. I'm not real sure I like that. Um, let's go ahead and turn it on. Channel mode. And it has the Balfang Lady inside, and we are in channel mode. I imagine if I press this... No, that takes me to the menu. Let's get out of the menu. Um, lock. I don't want to lock it. Now it's unlocked. I'm not 100% sure how we get to frequency mode. All right, uh, I was able to figure it out. So what we do is, is that if I hold this green button in and I turn it on, channel mode. it's in channel mode. So let me go ahead and turn this off. Hold that button in. Frequency mode. And now we're in frequency mode. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that when this comes on, this is not an amateur radio frequency. So let me just go ahead and turn this thing off. If I can figure out how to do that. Let's go back into channel mode. Channel mode. Two, one, one. <clears throat> and it has uh, frequencies programmed in here Two, that are one. not in the amateur radio spectrum. So that's probably a bad thing. The other thing I noticed is, is that um, if I press this button... Right now, you see a little teeny H right here. See that H? Medium, low. And that's a quick button to switch between the power levels, which is going to be handy because we're going to do a power test right about now. 
All right, so I was able to look in the manual and what we see here for menu number two right here, it's our transmit power and it says high, medium, and low, but it doesn't tell me what the values are. Now, I remember this saying somewhere along the lines that it was an eight watt capable radio. And if I go over here into the technical specifications, I don't see it anywhere. And then if I look over on this side on the transmitter specifications, I don't see anything around power. So it kind of sucks because we're not going to be able to tell if this thing passed or failed the power test. But we're set up right now and we are set on 146520 and we have the radio set right here. I don't know if you can see that. It's set for high and we're connected to the Nisei RS40 and we are set at the 15 watt power range. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to key it up and we're going to see what we see. And that's a little bit between 5 and 10 on the 15 scale. So let me key that up one more time. And uh, I don't know, it's probably more like 7 watts than it is 8, but uh, what do I know? Let's go ahead and switch this to medium. Well, hold on a second, that looks like it's almost exactly the same. And let's go ahead and switch it to low. And low looks like it's right at 5 watts. So maybe it's underpowered or over-delivering. I don't know what to make of that. Now on the side of this radio, we have a screw. Can you see it? And uh, I want to know what's underneath of that screw. And they put a screw like this on the radio to give it a waterproof type rating. And we saw on the box that this is called a waterproof radio. So let's just open this baby up and see what we see. Okay, so I was hoping that this would have the typical Kenwood adapter on here, but this is like similar to the Motorola style um, connectors that you use here. To, and it, again, it's for waterproofness. I wonder what this does for waterproofness, but uh, we'll just have to wonder. So taking a look at the battery that comes with it, it's lithium ion battery. It's the model BL9. And it says it's a DC 7.4 volts, 2,800 milliamps, 13.8 watt hours. Let's take a quick look at the menu. And the menu looks like your standard Baofeng menu. I'm not seeing much here that is different. Now, there might be something because I haven't committed the Baofeng menu to memory, but... Uh, this looks like a pretty standard Baofeng-esque. And I'm not going to go through all this because there's a million of videos out there showing you how to program and go through the menus. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. Testing. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. So taking a look at the side of the radio, you have your push to talk button right here. You have a button and it's probably programmable that will allow you to go into FM broadcast channels and then you can put in your favorite slow jam station. And if I push this button for all the Wacker fans out there, there is a flashlight and then I can even put it on strobe. So you know you're always safe if you have this Baofeng with you. Okay, just taking a few seconds to look at the Amazon listing, you can see that it's actually $30.19. So it's gone up about $0.21, $0.22 cents since I bought it. But uh, it comes in a variety of colors, red, yellow, and orange, and I opted for the orange one. If you take a look down here, it has 128 channels. And I'm not going to go through all of these different uh, specifications because you can come here and read these yourself if you want. But I wanted to highlight right here, it says programming cable, no included. And we took a look at the side of the radio and saw that apparently they do sell a cable that you can look up and you can buy on your own. And the other thing I wanted to look at here was it says right here, FCC part 15, part 97 certified. And uh, I didn't think there was a part 97 certification, but uh, who, what do I know? So let's uh, take this FCC ID and uh, we're going to look it up and see what we can find out. Okay, here we are on FCCID.io. And when we looked at this uh, page here, it has the different numbers up here for a couple of different radios. So it looks like this is rebranded under a couple of different names, which is typical. I'm not uh, upset or worried about that. But when I come down here and take a look at it, 
Uh, what I do see here are 15B roll parts, and this isn't anything to do with amateur radio. All of the electronic equipment in your house should have an FT FCC ID for 15B, uh, and it's an incidental radiator certification. So that means when this thing is turned on, when it's receiving, uh, when it's transmitting, that it is not going to release any emissions that may mess with other equipment in your house that may or may not be amateur radio related. So for example, your television set has FCC 15B certification. What I don't see is anything for Part 97 certification, like in the Amazon listing. Um, here is the FCC report, and I can come in here and see different things. And I can include these links below so you can inspect it yourself. But when you look at this, you can see there's some different files here. So what we want to look at is this test report. And so when I click on that, what I get is this test report. And the applicant name is Pofung Electric HK International Group Company Limited. And I believe this is a legitimate Baofeng company. But all the other companies that sell Baofengs will probably say it's not. Anyhow, if you come down here, you can see the model numbers, the UV9R Pro, and there's multiple models, the UV9R Plus, WP9R, and the AR9. Uh, this test was um, in 2001, so I didn't think it was that old. But uh, anyhow, if I scroll down here, we can see the test objective. And let me go down and see if I can find it. Bah, there's all this different stuff in here about the test and how it was conducted. And here we go. This report is in accordance with Part 2, Subpart J, and Part 15, Subparts A and B, both of the Federal Communications Rules. And it says the objective of the manufacturers determine the compliance of equipment under test with FCC Part 15 Class B device. I don't say anything about Part 97. Okay, we have the radio connected via this coaxial cable to my oscilloscope. And if you take a look at it, we are on low power and we are on 146500. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to switch over to the scope display. And what I like to do is I like to key the radio up and take a look at the carrier signal that comes out of the radio. And we take a look at this carrier signal because we want to see if it's a sinusoidal waveform or a distorted sinusoidal waveform. So let me go ahead and do this. And then let me hit auto and see what comes up. And shockingly enough, that's a pretty dang good looking signal. Um, there's a little bit of blurry and a little bit of artifacting up in there, but uh, I'm surprised by that. And you see if I modulate it with a DTMF tone, it seems to be fine. And then also take a look at the frequency counter on there and we are spot on on our frequency. So that's pretty good. Okay, what we have here is the tiny SAs connected to our computer. We are sharing the screen, and you can see that right there. We are set up to do a harmonics or spurious emissions test with our fundamental frequency being 146.500 megahertz. Now, any harmonics or spurious emissions in the two meter band need to be 40 dB below the fundamental. And I should say if the fundamental is in the two meter band. They also need to be below that blue line that you see on the screen there, and that is negative 16.02 dBm. Now, if you're really interested in this, you can look up the Part 97 rules and read all about the regulations. We're just going to do a quick test here and determine if the device under test, which is our UV9R uh, Pro, is legal for use or not. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to key this up, and we are on high power. Oh, I have a couple of attenuators in line with the tiny SA as well. If you ever want to replicate this test yourself, go check out some of my tiny SA videos and learn how to do it. So when we do this test, because we have the tiny SA set at a pretty granular level, it takes a few sweeps in order to get an accurate measurement. So we're going to let itself sort out right about now. Also, you'll notice at the top that marker number uh, 1T, it says 146.8 megahertz. And that just has something to do with the number of data points that are available for us to test. It's not a big deal. The radio is on frequency, and so is the tiny SA. So when we go and we run this test, uh, I think we've settled everything down at this point, and this is clean. This is the cleanest Belfang that uh, I've ever seen. Um, we really don't have any spurious emissions that we need to be concerned about. Okay, I just set the radio to medium power. Let's just take a quick look there and see if it makes a difference. It shouldn't. Yep, 
you can see a little bit of a harmonic there on uh, marker number two, but that is well below negative 40 dB down from our primary. And it's also below the blue line. So I think we're just fine there. And I'm switching over to low power. Let's key it up and see what happens now. And the low power looks just fine as well. Nothing to be worried about or nothing to be concerned about right there. So, like I said, that's probably the cleanest Baofeng I think I've ever seen. All right, one other thing I wanted to mention about these Baofeng radios is that they use a direct conversion front end or receiver, and they're not always the best. And as a result, that these radios can become overloaded when other frequencies are present. And it could be something up close to you, it could be something far away that's a strong signal, and it overloads the front end and can cause some reception problems. Um, like one of the things I'll say is that you might be using your Baofeng and then all of a sudden it becomes deaf or desensitized and you can't hear what you want to listen to. And that's a result of this particular uh, overload situation occurring. For $30, I don't think that you can expect a radio to really beat that problem. So I'm going to go ahead and say I'm not too overly concerned or worried about it. Um, this actually tested out pretty good and I'm pretty surprised. Uh, it has the USB-C charging. Um, it has a clean, a clean spectrum on it. The carrier frequency looks good. So I'm going to say, is this the best Baofeng ever? It might be the best one that I own. Anyhow, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks.